السلام علیکم رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اب نا دا ٹائم از وی آر آلریڈی بینگ ویڈیوڈ اینڈ دا ٹرانسمیشن از ناؤ اسپریڈنگ آل اوور دا ورلڈ یو نو اٹس بینگ ٹرانسمیٹڈ ٹو دا ہول ورلڈ امین وی ریڈ ان نیوز پیپرز کمنگ فرام سعودی عربیا اینڈ ادر کنٹریز اباؤٹ گریٹ علماز who said that some people are touched with jinn and they treat them by certain ways and they can expel the satan from their bodies and they hear the uh, jinn coming out. The, the big mufti, yes. he said that in the, in the papers. What is it true about this? Can these offer themselves for trials and experiments to others? I don't know. Maybe. See, this is the point. <coughs> About the word jinn, there is so much controversy in the world. There are people who believe that uh, jinn, the word jinn is applicable only to an invisible form of life, spirit-like like a ghost and that form of life is free to move anywhere it, it chooses. It can go through walls, it can go through anything and it can be subjugated through verses of the Quran or through some other uh, chantings for instance. You know, say chant something over like that they say it is they can be subjugated and uh, pressed into service of man that is one view and the same people also believe that the jinn can sometimes overpower man forcibly occupy him so a man lives with two souls and two minds during that period it's called the haunting period. During the haunting, the jinn is present and when you speak to the man, it is not the man who answers. Mostly it is, they say women, it is women who are haunted by jinns. It is the jinn who answers back. And the ulema say, we have some tricks up our sleeves. That is, we know some verses of the Quran, when we recite them, then the jinn runs away. Right? And some believe also that the jinn's true verses can be turned into your servants. And if you tell a jinn to bring a chicken cooked somewhere else, he will just run for it and bring it like a, like a you know. And the jinn of the, uh, the Aladdin's lamp, you remember? Yes, yes. Huh? In uh, Al-Fulala, Al huh? yeah. that jinn also created so many tricks, you know. So these are the views. But those people, those countries where such jinns are believed to be available and they great Sufis and ulema and mashayikh, they know how to capture them. They are third world countries, <coughs> poor people. They can't make the jinn bring the oil out of the earth, spring out. And they cannot make the jinn uh, build industry for them. What sort of jinn are they? See, it's a strange thing, but first you translate it, then I'll speak of other things. It's a very interesting subject. It always comes up for discussion, wherever I go. السؤال هو عن موضوع الجن فقد قرأنا في بعض الصحف التي تأتي من البلاد العربية وأخبار عن كبار العلماء والمفتين الذين يدعون أنهم يخرجون الجن من أجسام المرضى. والحوادث كثيرة وسمعنا بها 
ونسأل هذا السؤال هل ما حقيقة هؤلاء الجن وما حقيقة ما يدعيه هؤلاء الشيوخ والعلماء يقول أمير المؤمنين أن موضوع الجن موضوع يثير كثيرا من الجدل فكثير من الناس يعتقدون أن الجن كائن خفي يستطيع أن يذهب إلى كل مكان وأن يمر خلال الحوائط ويصعد ويخبط يتحرك بكل حرية ويزعم البعض أنه يمكن إخضاع هذا الجن بآيات معينة من القرآن أو بقراءة بعض التعازيم أو كلام معين يمكن إخضاع الجن بهم هؤلاء الناس يعتقدون أيضا أن الجن يمكن أن يتغلب على الإنسان ويسيطر عليه فيكون الإنسان تحت تأثير الجن بمعنى أنه يعيش وله نفسين أو روحين وعندما يتحدث الإنسان مع هذا المريض فإن الجن هو الذي يجيب وإن كان بلسان أو بفم هذا المريض ويعتقد البعض أن الجن يمكن أن يتصرف ويخدم الإنسان إذا سيطر عليه الإنسان ببعض آيات معينة من القرآن الكريم يقول الحضور أن هذه الأماكن التي تنتشر فيها مثل هذه العقائد هي في بلاد العالم الثالث حيث الفقر وحيث الجهل وحيث الحاجة إلى التنمية ومثل هذه الأمور فإذا كان هؤلاء الناس العلماء والصوفية وغيرهم الذين يدعون أنهم يسيطرون على الجن أو يمكن أن يسيطروا على الجن فلماذا لا يخدمون قضايا التنمية مثل إخراج البترول والمعادن من الأرض وإنشاء المصانع وأسرار العلوم وهذه الأشياء التي يمكن أن يطلع عليها الجن بحسب مفاهيمهم ولكن هذا لا يحدث Now, in this regard, in this particular area, I'll refer to the Holy Quran and see what we find there. We find no mention of any jinn ever capturing a human being. From Bay to, to, to Sin, to the first letter to the last letter. Read the Quran a hundred thousand times, you will not find one mention where the Allah, Holy Allah tells us that jinn sometimes capture human beings. And if they do, then turn them out. But the Holy Quran tells us that the non-believers say that, not the believers. The Holy Quran repeatedly tells us the mushrikeen in Mecca. The idolaters, they used to say Behil Jinnah, Behil Jinn. And about other prophets also. The claim is never made by a prophet of God about anyone else that he has been captured by Jinn. This is what I mean. See? So false people make the claim, the true people do not. And why did they say Jinn? Because They believe that jinn is alim al -ghayb. He knows things and he can do tricks. So because they saw, they saw the signs of the knowledge of the unknown in the words of the prophets of Allah. So they couldn't believe that man to be true. They didn't believe, couldn't believe that it is Allah who is telling him things. So they said it must be jinn. He must have been captured by jinn. And those people who were captured by jinn, according to the mullahs today, like it was also according to the beliefs of the kuffar e Mecca, the idolaters of the Arab world, that whenever one somebody is captured by jinn, he loses his senses. In that sense also, the word Janoon indicates as if somebody has been captured by Jinn, he's gone mad. So in that second sense also, they declared the prophets to be Al-Majnoon, visited by Jinn. So remember, the Holy Quran never quotes either God or angels, or prophets of Allah, or any book of God, having declared 
that some people are captured by jinn. It declares that the false people, wrongdoers, non-believers, those who believe in idols, they make this claim that some people are captured by jinn. So where have these ulama learned their Quran? I don't know. May I make a comment? The ulama mixes the idea of Satan with that of jinn. And in the Holy Quran, Satan with the shaitan with the jinn. And they say that the Holy the Quran says Masun Minal Yatahabatu Kama Kaladi Kaladi Yatahabatu Yatahabatu Shayatinu Minal Mess. This is not the exact word, but I am. Yes, this is the idea. So they say that these shayatin are jinn and the jinn can touch the man and do this harm to him. What I am saying is, I understand this point. The Holy Quran, when it speaks of that, it says that when people, evil people, are overwhelmed with their bad desires, they behave as if they have been touched. By shaitan, not by jinn. I understand. But even then, kanna <laughs> It doesn't say yes. that it is shaitan which does it. It says they behave as if shaitan has captured them. Yes. It's always as if. But that is a different situation altogether. And to turn shaitan out, no prophet of God ever used any verses of any divine book to turn the shaitan out. If there was any such verse, was not Abu Jahl the chief among them who had been touched by the shaitan and captured? Was he not? Yes. Was it jinn? If it were jinn, the ulema know the formula, Rasulullah didn't know the formula. <laughs> so, sheer ignorance, stupidity, you know. Those who say that, they are touched by jinn, if anybody is. <laughs> يقول أمير المؤمنين تعالوا ننظر إلى القرآن ليست هناك آية واحدة في القرآن من أوله إلى آخره تذكر أن الجن يمكن أن يسيطروا ويتغلبوا على الإنسان وأن هناك طريقة لطردهم ولكنه إذ يحكي فإنه يحكي ما يعتقده مشرك مكة وعباد الأصنام وغيرهم ممن كانوا يعتقدون أن هناك جن وأن هذا الجن يعلم الغيب وأنه يسيطر على الأرض وأنه يستطيع أن يفعل كثيرا من الأمور في الإنسان فهو يحكي عن عقائدهم أما في القرآن فإن الله تعالى لم يذكر أبدا ولم يرد عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أبدا أن هناك جن يلبسون أو يتلبسون بالإنسان بهذا المفهوم ويسيطرون عليه ويمكن طردهم بالقرآن كذلك يبين أمير المؤمنين أن هذه العقيدة فيهم هي التي أخذوا منها كلمة الجنون لأنهم كانوا يعتقدون أن الجن عندما يتلبس بالإنسان ويسيطر عليه فإنه يفقده عقله وعقله وبذلك يكون قد جن أي زارته الجن وأثرت عليه ومنها كلمة الجنون يقول أمير المؤمنين هل هؤلاء العلماء يعرفون أسرار القرآن التي يخرجون بها الجن؟ والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يعرفه إذا كان أبو جهل كبير الكفر والمشركين قد تلبسه الشيطان تماما حتى أنه كان يحارب النبي ويعصى كل شيء ويخالف ألم يكن النبي يعرف هذه الآيات التي يتلوها على أبي جهل فيحوله إلى الإيمان هذا, هذا غباء وخرافة جاروا فيها هؤلاء الجهل وعباد الأصنام you see, no prophet of God ever recited any verse from any book over an antagonist or a hostile person and said, all right, you are captured by jinn, now jinn go away. Where did it happen? In which book is it mentioned? Yes, in the Bible it is said, in the New Testament. But that is a story no Muslim can believe. Jesus, they say, cast the jinn out of somebody and that the number of jinns was so many 
they went into the minds of the sheep and all the sheep went mad and just dived into the water and were drowned. Now this is a story of the New Testament Christians may believe it if they like. But no sane Muslim can ever believe in such a thing. Because never such a thing happened at the time of Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah And according to the version of the Holy Quran, it never happened to Jesus either. It never happened to Moses or any other prophet of Allah. When, when one is captured by shaitan, shaitan kana min al-jinn, according to the Quran, which means the jinn are a people who are rebellious, made out of fire. The Holy Quran says, which means that he made the jinn out of fire or a blast of fire. This is an Arabic expression. Khulakal insanu min ajal. What is ajal? How can you make man out of ajal? Haste. This means anybody who has an element of haste in him, he is made out of ajal. Anybody who is fiery, he is made out of fire. This is an Arabic expression of the highest quality. And the Quran has the highest quality of language. So that is why jinn is created from fire, means they are rebellious people. Shaitan is rebellious. Anybody who refuses to believe in authority, he is from fire. That is exactly what uh, Iblis said to God when he was in, required by God to submit to Adam. You know what he said? He said, I am built out of fire. He is built out of wet clay. Fire will not submit to wet clay. Fire overpowers it. Fire destroys everything. So I am a destructive man. Your prophet Adam is a creative man. He stands for good things. I am evil. I destroy things. He makes things. You see, wet clay makes things. And fire destroys them. The whole city is a raised to ground with fire. So he said, this is my nature. How can you expect me to bow down? I said, all right, go away. But you, you're wrong when you say you will conquer the people of clay. When they, are, they submit to me, then they will reach beyond your, they'll go beyond your reach. You'll never be able to destroy them. This is what we read from the Quran. And Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam understood the Quran more than anyone, any human being can ever claim. Correct? Now, what he thought of jinn or shaitan? The Mullah says one and the same thing. Kana min jinn, so shaitan was a jinn. Right or wrong? Right. He was a jinn. And the Surah Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa said, Every man there is a shaitan that runs into his blood. Where is that fire which runs into your blood or anybody else's blood? Somebody said, Ya Rasulullah, even in your blood there is a shaitan? I said, yes, but he has become Muslim. <laughs> no, any man with an iota of common sense can understand this. He referred to shaitan or jinn to be that nafse ammara. Nafse ammara is, is a rebellious nature in man. When you say, do good things, they say, no, I'm not going to do good things. Allah tells you to do this, do that, all the good things. Nafse ammara says, no, don't believe, don't believe. So, Nafse Ammara of Hazrat Muhammad 
had got completely subdued. There was no evil voice ever rising from his heart, telling him to do bad things. That is the meaning of his shaitan becoming Muslim. The Quran is a word of wisdom, profound wisdom. The word of God has to be a word of wisdom. So without wisdom you can't understand. That is the problem. يقول أمير المؤمنين أن موضوع الجن وإخراجها وطردها بآيات أو بكلمات لم ترد مطلقا عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا على أي نبي آخر اللهم إلا أن هناك قصة وردت في الإنجيل عن سيدنا عيسى أنه أخرج قطيعا من الجن من جسد بعض المرضى وكان عددها كبير فانطلقت إلى عدد من الماشية أو من الأغنام فجنت هذه الأغنام وقفزت إلى البحر هذه القصة الخرافية إذا أراد النصارى أن يؤمنوا بها فهم وشأنهم لكن لا يمكن لمسلم عاقل أن يعتقد في مثل هذه العقيدة ثم يقول أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لأن القرآن لا يؤيد مثل هذا الرأي لو كان مثل هذا الشيء قد حدث لا ذكره القرآن يقول أن القرآن يحكي لنا عن أن الشيطان هو المتمرد العاتي الذي رفض أن يطيع سيدنا آدم عندما أمره الله تعالى بالطاعة وقال أنا خير من خلقتني من نار وخلقته من طين وأخبر القرآن أن هذا المتمرد كان من الجن فهذا يبين معنى الشيطان ومعنى الجن فالشيطان هو المتمرد العاتي الذي يرفض الطاعة والجن أخبر القرآن أنه مخلوق من نار أي أن في طبعه النار وضرب مثلا أنه خلق الإنسان من عجل فهل الإنسان مصنوع من عجل؟ هذا طبعا غير معقول وإنما يريد القرآن بهذا الأسلوب البلاغي أن يبين أن في طبع الإنسان العجلة فعندما يقول أنه مخلوق من نار أي أن في طبعه هذا التأجج وهذه النيرانية وقد رفض هذا المخالف طاعة سيدنا آدم وقال أنا خلقتني من نار أي ليس من طبيعتي أن أخضع لأن النار تحرق كل شيء وتتغلب على كل شيء وسيدنا آدم مخلوق من طين والطين هو المادة المتشكلة التي تصنع منها الأشياء فكأن طبيعة هذا الجن هو العصيان والتمرد وطبيعة آدم هي الخلق هذا للتكوين والبناء وهذا للتدمير ولا يمكن أن يتفق ولذلك بيّن القرآن أن من كان طبعه هكذا لا يمكن أن يكون مطيعا للأنبياء فإذا الشيطان هو كل متمرد خارج عن طاعة الله وطاعة أنبيائه ولو كان هناك طريقة للسيطرة على الشياطين بقراءة آيات من القرآن أو أشياء أخرى لكان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هو من فعل هذا يقول أمير المؤمنين إن القرآن هو كلام الله وكلام الله كلام الحكيم ولا يفهم إلا بالحكمة فيجب أن على الإنسان أن يتدبر المعاني والبلاغة التي ترد في القرآن وتصدر عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حتى يفهمها الفهم الذي يليق بها The ulema also refer to the period of Hazrat Dawood and Hazrat Suleiman and uh, draw their authority from what we find about the jinn having been captivated by Hazrat Dawood and Hazrat Suleiman. Correct? Now, what did they do? They did very hard works for them. Masaniya Kathira. And they built heavy industry out of this jinn in the Quran. Correct? So if they draw their authority from the Quran and they know how to do it, they should build some industry in Arabia. What are they doing there? Poor people, backward people of desert and other countries, those Arab countries which have some oil, all right, they are better off. But what about those who do not have any oil? 
These ulama should have the same jinn employed by Hazrat Dawood and Sulaiman and do some industrial work there. They can't. Which means they don't understand. While the Holy Quran gives enough clues for us to understand. But if you don't have wisdom, you can't do anything, unfortunately. The Holy Quran gives us the clue that these jinns of Solomon and, and, and David, peace be upon them, you know, they were shackled in heavy chains. They were taken to work while they were imprisoned, bound in chains. It doesn't say they were bound in verses of the Bible or any of the other divine words. Have you ever read that in the Quran? And what sort of jinns are they who are shackled in chains? They are invisible things. They pass through the stone and walls and the metal. How could chains of iron hold them together? Only verses of the Quran, according to these ulama, could hold them together. And no verses are mentioned in the Quran. The Quran doesn't know that there are such verses. They know. Imagine. The Quran doesn't know that there are some verses which can bind jinns. The ulama know that there are some verses. So when you speak of the jinns of the Solomon and, and David, the Holy Quran says they were bound in heavy chains, which means they are hardy, sturdy people. They were rebellious people who had been enslaved by the power of Hazrat Dawood and Hazrat Sulaiman, with the grace of Allah, it was God who had given him power to conquer these people. Now, this is an old custom of those days. Even pharaohs, when they built the great pyramids, they used to move thousands of prisoners in chain, in shackles, from one place to the other, to carry heavy stones and heavy works, and they built the pyramids for them. So it is an old custom, which is also mentioned in the Holy Quran, with reference to Hazrat Dawood, Hazrat Sulaiman, and uh, this is, there is no wonder. So they were the rebellious people who knew, but at the same time, the Holy Quran doesn't say that even one single man was visited and haunted by one of the jinns of Hazrat Dawood. Show me the reference, there it is. هؤلاء العلماء يشيرون ويحتجون بموضوع الجن في زمن سيدنا داود وسيدنا سليمان وأنهم كانوا يسيطرون على الجن وكانت لهم جنود من الجن يقول إنهم كانوا ماذا كان يفعل هؤلاء الجن كانوا يبنون لهم القصور والحصون والجواب كالجفان وأشياء صناعية مفيدة فهؤلاء العلماء في الذين يخرجون الجن بطريقتهم لماذا لا يستخدمون هؤلاء الجن في مساعدة البلاد المتخلفة البلاد الإسلامية والعربية المتخلفة قد يكون هناك بترول في بعض البلاد ويكون حالهم جيد ولكن هناك بلاد فقيرة تحتاج إلى هؤلاء الجن ليساعدوهم في بناء ما يحتاجون إليه هم لا يفعلون ذلك لأنهم مخطئون ولا يقولون الحق ليست هناك آيات قرآنية للسيطرة على الجن وليس هناك جن للسيطرة عليهم بهذه الآيات القرآنية القرآن يقدم لنا القرائن ويوضح لنا الأمور لقد وصف هؤلاء الجن الذين كانوا في خدمة أو المسخرين لسيدنا سليمان أنهم كانوا مقيدين في الأغلال فأي نوع من الجن هذا الذي يقيد في الأغلال الحديدية السلاسل لو كانوا الجن كما يفهمون فكيف يقيد هؤلاء بالسلاسل وإذا كانوا يقيدوا بالسلاسل فكيف يقيدهم هؤلاء المشايخ بالآيات القرآنية أو بغيرها القرآن يبين أنه ليس هناك آيات قرآنية القرآن لا يعرف آيات قرآنية كما يعرف هؤلاء المشايخ الذين يزعمون أن هناك آيات تكبل الجن القرآن يعلن أنها تكبل بالسلاسل شأنها شأن الكائنات البشرية 
إذا كان سيدنا سليمان يسيطر على هؤلاء ومكنه الله من غزو بلادهم والسيطرة عليهم واستخدمهم في أعمال البناء والإنشاءات مكبلين في الأغلال وهذه عادة موجودة في الملوك القدامى المصريون القدامى كانوا يستخدمون الأسرى مكبلين في الأغلال ل والمعابد وغير وكذلك كان يفعل سيدنا سليمان في هذا العمل إذا الجن هم هؤلاء الأقوياء المتمردون العتاء الذين يعصون سيدنا سليمان واستطاع بفضل الله أن يسيطر عليهم بقوة جيوشه وبمهارته وقدرته على الحكم دين دأسيم علماء قوت دا قرآن بيسين The jinn is made out of fire, and they insist this is made out of fire. But when this jinn enters a man or a poor woman, why does it burn it out? What sort of fire that is? It doesn't burn. A woman, a delicate woman is captured, her clothes remain exactly the same, her body remains the same, The fire is in her and it does not burn. What sort of fire that is? Then in the Holy Quran it is said, the same jinn who are shackled, you know, in chains, heavy chains, they also dived into the water and took out, took pearls from underneath, brought them out for the sake of her, his, the kings, or the, the prophets of God. for whom they had been uh, subserved, made, uh, you know, to serve the cause. Now, these uh, jinns, according to the Quran, could delve into the water, go deep, and take out the pearls. What sort of fire that was? It didn't quench, not quench the water. So a fire which does not burn, a fire which is not quenched, What sort of fire that is? So if they quote the Quran, they should try to understand the Quran as well. Those jinns were real human beings, a rebellious people who could do heavy works. And they toiled and toiled to do works. And that is why the industry in the time of Hazrat Dawud and Hazrat Sulaiman prospered so much. And when the reign of Hazrat, after the death of Suleiman, an incapable son sat on the throne, and these people got the wind of it, that uh, there's no more a powerful king like Solomon. They started rebelling. They broke away the shackles, and then they started breaking the, the, the empire by capturing uh, small portions here and there. Right? Yet, none of them, when free, captured anyone else. Not a single human being. So the Quran doesn't know these things and the ulama know. Strange thing, isn't it? Yeah, I will mention something I forgot okay. the last okay. time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. فاتني أن أبين ما قاله أمير المؤمنين أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أخبر أن لكل إنسان شيطان يجري في جسده مجرى الدم أي أنه في داخل الإنسان فسئل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنت يا رسول الله قال نعم ولكن شيطاني أسلم يبين أمير المؤمنين كيف الشيطان هذا المخلوق من النار يدخل في جسد الإنسان ويجري في عروقه مجرى الدم ولا يحرقه كيف يكون هذا؟ وما معنى أن شيطان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أسلم هذا معنى أن النفس البشرية الأمارة بالسوء التي لم تهذب ولم تتعلم هي تدفع الإنسان نحو العصيان ونحو الاندفاع إلى الأمور السيئة ولكن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قد أدبه ربه وعلمه أصبحت نفسه طاهرة لا تأمره أبدا إلا بخير ومعنى ذلك أن شيطانه قد أسلم ثم هؤلاء الجن الذين كانوا في خدمة سيدنا سليمان القرآن يقول كل غواص وبناء كانوا يغوصون في الماء لاستخراج اللؤلؤ من البحرين والبحار التي هناك 
لو كان هؤلاء الجن من النار كيف يغوصون في الماء ولا ينطفئون أي نوع من النار هذه التي لا تنطفئ بالماء ولا تحرق الأجسام إذا هي ليست ليس المعنى أنه مصنوع من النار الحقيقية وإنما في طبعه هذا التأجج وهذه هذا الفوران التي تتصف به النار فكأن الجن في حالة سيدنا سليمان هم المتمردون الذين خرجوا أو كانوا يخرجون على نظامه وكانوا يسكنون في الجبال واستطاع أن يسيطر عليهم بعد سيدنا سليمان هؤلاء الجن استطاعوا أن يستولوا على على دولته وأن يقسموها إلى أجزاء لم يذكر التاريخ ولم يذكر القرآن أن هؤلاء خرجوا عن طاعة سليمان فلبسوا الناس وآذوهم كما يظن هؤلاء أو كما يحكي هؤلاء الناس إذا هذا المعنى الخرافي ليس موجودا في القرآن ولا ليس موجودا في الحقيقة Now I just suggested that if they really believe in what they attribute to the Quran if they are honest then they should demonstrate it they say we have turned the jinn out okay we haven't seen it huh? but they when they turn the jinn into their servant then should they should invite us to see that see here something becomes demonstrable if they can't make industry like the daud and the suleiman built industries out of the jinn i don't demand all right don't build industries just for small things for cooking your bread for handing over things for polishing your shoes for sewing your clothes when you th- throw a jinn out of some poor woman capture him and put him in your house to work when it begins to produce that work then we'll see works happening then we'll have to believe but until that don't make a false claim please May I say a few as I used Hadur's idea yes. I, while I was in Sudan. I see. There was a mullah. Uh-huh. They, in Sudan, they believe that they... Oh, very much. Yes, they can do whatever they can by exactly. the jinn. Then there was a fakir. They call him Faki, Faki. Mm-hmm. He says, I can do everything with jinn. I, and I'll send the jinn for you. You will not sleep today, tonight. Mm-hmm. I told him, not to me. Please show the people. You see these few onions there. Uh-huh. Please bring them. <laughs> Let the man. You right. see uh-huh. this money in my pocket? Uh-huh. Take, it, take it please. Uh-huh. Take it see? They, they said to me, maybe you can use gin better than him. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the answer. Exactly. This is what I'm saying. Exactly. Yes, this is the same <laughs> idea. <laughs> you can tell them your own experiences. Yes, okay. uh-huh. يقول أمير المؤمنين أنهم يدعون أنهم يخرجون الجن باستخدام القرآن معنى إخراج الجن أنهم يستطيعون السيطرة على الجن لا بأس يمكن أن يجربوا هذا ويبينوا للناس جميعا قدرتهم هذه وعلى وجود الجن بأنهم يستخدموا هؤلاء الجن في عمل بناء يصنعوا شيئا يقيموا شيئا في خدمة المجتمع إذا تبين أن الجن قد فعلوا ذلك فقد صدقوا فيما قالوا عن الجن وصدقوا فيما قالوا عن سيطرتهم على الجن وقد حكيت لأمير المؤمنين تجربة لي في السودان حيث يعتقد الناس هناك بالجن وأنهم يسيطرون على الدنيا بهذا الجن وكنت في أحد الأسواق وجاء أحد الفقهاء يسمونه هناك فقيه أو فكي فقال أنا أستطيع ومعروف عند الناس أنه يستطيع السيطرة على الجن فقلت له من فضلك إذا هناك بضع بصلات موجودة هناك على الأرض اجعل الجن يأتوا بها إلى هنا أو هنا في جيبي بضعة قروش اجعل الجن تأخذها من جيبي طبعا لم يستطع ولن يس ولا يستطيع فقال الناس إنني أستطيع أن أسيطر على الجن أو أستخدم الجن أكثر منه فهذا شيء طبعا مضحك نعم no. They also refer to Surah Jinn, or Surah Al-Jinn in the Quran. And they say it is written there that a delegation from among the jinn came to visit Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah Why do you say there is no jinn? We don't say there is no jinn. We say jinn is not what you think it is. It is different. And from the Quran we prove that it is different from what you think. Jinn, of course, there is. The Holy Quran is full of mention of jinns. But we'll believe only in that jinn which the Holy Quran describes. 
not that dream which you described. So, let's see what happened. When the, the delegation from among the jinn came, they encamped outside Medina, a kilometer or two outside Medina. And Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu went to meet him privately without taking anybody along with him. Huh? Except one person. Except one person. Thank you for correction. Yes. And he visited and talked with them. And no hadith mentions that he recited any verse of the Quran to charm them. They were free, they discussed things, and they were convinced that Hazrat Muhammad was true Prophet of God. Then they affirmed this, they confirmed and professed the faith of Islam by declaring that Muhammad is right and La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Then they went back. Now there are two things which happened. When they went back, next morning when Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah told the people what had happened, people went to see the place where it had happened. And they report that there were signs of fire, fires are being built, as if human beings had come and stayed there. Ashes. Huh? Ashes. 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 Signs of fire having built ashes and stones and things, and wood burned in that fire, like a delegation of human beings had come. Jinns are out, out of fire, why should they build fire? What do you mean by jinns building fire? And they were again human jinns because when they returned, first of all, <coughs> they believed in Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah and they were preached by Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah. Now, was Ahazur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for only that delegation of jinns or for all the jinns? So where did he pray to preach Islam? to the rest of the jinns, only who came to them, came to him, and no to none else. What about the rest, remaining of the poor jinns of the whole world? Why didn't he sometimes go to them and start preaching like he went to Taif and other places of the world? And why did he not pick up fights and quarrels with those jinns? Nowhere it is mentioned. The jinns who came to him believed in him and professed. And you know what they said when they returned? You know that? It says, the Holy Quran tells us, That's they right. said we were so stupid. We thought there will be no prophet after the previous prophet. And here is another prophet. They were believers of Khatim and Khatim and You see? They thought the prophecy had come to an end. But after somebody else was made a Khatam al Nabiin, Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah the Khatam al Nabiin appeared. So they must have been human beings who believed like Hazrat Yusuf's followers did. Maybe they belonged to those people. Because the Holy Quran tells us about one other people who also believe like the present day Muslims that prophecy of all sorts has come to an end. So when Joseph came, the Holy Quran tells us, they were against him. They said, we don't believe in you, you are a false man. They tried their best to oppose him. But when he passed away, then the same people with the same mentality of opposing prophets, they started building the view that, whatever it, no, no. I don't remember the exact words. No, something, huh? like yeah, something like that. Something like that. So, this is what the Holy Quran tells us. So, these jinns must have been the followers of Yusuf, or because we don't find any other mention of any other people declaring like this. Maybe they are Christians because they believe that Jesus is God and he, there is no prophets are coming after Jesus because they be... Oh, well, well, that's a different thing. Yes. But they say Jesus himself would come. 
Oh, yes. You see? Yes, 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 yes. yes. This is like every, in, in every case. Yes, yes. They believe somebody would come. Yes. And he himself as a prophet would return. Yes, yes. So also in that regard, the Muslims also they believe that Jesus would come again. There's no wonder. But what I'm saying is, the Holy Quran refers to the people of Joseph who believe that after Joseph, no prophet will ever be raised by God. This was a positive declaration. And this belief is the belief repeated by the delegation of jinns when they visited Allah And when they went back, they said, look here, how stupid we are. Safi Huna, you know, our, our stupid people used to say, no prophet would ever come. And here, here is the prophet, you see. We have just met him and we are returning from seeing him. So these were the jinns who wanted to hide their personality, their, their identity. They must have been delegation or from an area where they were afraid of being identified because they were not yet sure how their people would take it. Maybe there were some uh, sort of uh, relation with the Quraysh and they do not want to It is also have possible, some but, problems but, with but them. But we are talking not of the Mackie period, we are talking Medina. of Medinite period. Yes. So it's what you, you, what you suggest is that they were friendly to the Quraysh and they did not want this to be known to the Quraysh that they had become Muslims. Yes. That is correct, that is possible. I thought you say they were afraid of Quraysh knowing it uh, because they visited Mecca. Is that what you meant? Yes, yes. Okay. But this happened in Medina, not in Mecca. So it is possible, of course, but it is also possible that they had not yet returned to their people. They had not yet uh, fully tested that when they speak to them and tell them the react what the reaction would be. So in the beginning they wanted to hide it a little bit. So And those people must have been known by the Medi Medinites. Otherwise they wouldn't, couldn't be recognized. But the last thing in this was that if they were Jains, they should not have been visible to, to ordinary people. Why should Rasulullah have gone out a few miles out of Medina to meet them in private? When the jinns appear... They can visit him in his huh? room. In his room. <laughs> yes. And you see, when the Malvis see jinns, we don't see them. Can we? No. So when the jinns can show this miracle to the Malvis, why didn't show, they show this miracle to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You know, the Mullah's jinn is not visible. And that jinn was visible, otherwise he would not be afraid. You understand? <laughs> so that's all I have to say for the time being. Yes. There is a very large subject. You can say, for hours you can discuss jinn, but later on the remaining uh, part of the jinn subject will be discussed, okay? Mm. وَلَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ يُوسُفُ مِنْ قَبْلِ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَلَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ يُوسُفُ مِنْ قَبْلِ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ فَمَا زِلْتُمْ فِي شَكِّمْ مِمَّا جَاءَكُمْ بِهِ حَتَّى إِذَا حَلَكَ قُلْتُمْ لَنْ يَبَثَ اللَّهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ رَسُولًا The same people who oppose the prophets with same mentality, when the process pass, prophets pass away, they say, now God will never send them. This is a mentality. They don't want to accept the prophets. One, okay, with difficulty. After that, no one. So this is the clear mention that the concept of no prophet was also found among other people. But the jinns also refer to that. سفیونا وَأَنَّهُمْ ظَنُّوا كَمَا ظَنَنْتُمْ أَلَّنْ يَبَثَ اللَّهُ أَحَبَا So these jinns must have been some human jinns belonging to some religions where this belief was found as the Holy Quran mentions it itself. Please. 
يقول أمير المؤمنين أن هؤلاء العلماء يشيرون إلى سورة الجن ويحسبون أننا لا نؤمن بالجن يقول نحن نؤمن بالجن لأن القرآن ذكر كلمة الجن في كثير من الآيات ولكننا نؤمن بالجن كما يقوله القرآن وليس كما يدور في أذهان هؤلاء البسطاء أو هؤلاء الجهلاء نعم الجن قد جاءوا إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وقد ثبت أنه خرج إليهم خارج المدينة وأنه قابلهم وأنه اصطحب معه أحد الصحابة ووضعه في مكان وذهب هو لمقابلة هؤلاء الجن وأنه تحدث إليهم ووعظهم وقرأ عليهم القرآن وأفهمهم الإسلام وصدقوه وآمنوا به وعادوا إلى بلدهم يبشرون به ويدعون إلى دعوته المهم أن بعد ذلك عندما أخبر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم صحابته وذهبوا إلى مكان اللقاء فوجدوا هناك آثار النيران ووجدوا آثار الإبل وكأن هناك قافلة كانت موجودة معسكر كان موجودا في هذا المكان لو كان هؤلاء من الجن كما يفهم هؤلاء المشايخ أو هؤلاء المضللون كيف تكون هذه إذا كانوا هم من النار فكيف يصنعون نارا وكيف يركبون جمالا تأكل وتترك هذه البقايا هناك ولماذا إذا كانوا يزورون المشايخ أو يخرجون عند المشايخ ولا يراهم الناس لماذا لا يذهبون لمقابلة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في بيته لماذا في الليل ولماذا يخرج إليهم ويقطع هذه المسافة إذا كانوا جنا كما يقولون بالمفهوم الذي يفهمون لزاروا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في مكانه ويبدو من القرآن الكريم أن هؤلاء القوم هؤلاء من البشر الذين لم يريدوا أن يعرف أنهم زاروا النبي أو لم يريدوا أن تكون هناك مشاكل بينهم وبين قريش أن يعلن عنهم فلذلك سموا جنا أي الذين لا يعرفون أو الذين يخفون أنفسهم عن الغير يقول أمير من أنهم عندما عادوا آمنوا وأخبروا قومهم أن هؤلاء هذا نبي ونحن كنا نظن أنه لا يبعث نبي بعد ذلك وهذه العقيدة موجودة من قبل في قوم يوسف الذين شكوا في أمره وظنوا أنه لن يأتي بعده رسول وقد جاء بعده رسل هناك صنف من الناس يكذبون الرسل ويعارضونهم فإذا ما توفي الرسول بعد ذلك يرفضون أن يأتي رسول آخر بعده ويعتقدون بختم النبوة أي قفل باب النبوة وباب الوحي عن البشر فإذا هذا الوفد من الجن هو وفد من البشر جاء إلى المدينة وقابل النبي وعاد كما يعود كل البشر وليس المفهوم الخاطئ عن المخلوقات الخفية التي لا يراها احد هؤلاء المشايخ يستطيعون ان يسيطروا على الجن والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لم يستطع ان يسيطر عليهم بطريقتهم انه ذهب اليهم وجلس اليهم وتحدث اليهم ووعظهم ثم عاد وعاد هو الى بيته نو اي كوت ان ذا اند وان حديث من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ويتش سبورت ماي فيو فولي ذي تيل اس that because the jinns did not want to appear to everyone else, they stayed outside Medina. While the Surah Kim Sallallahu tells us that the jinns eat the bones of things, so do not wash yourself, clean yourself with bones. So they were all over Medina. <laughs> you know, who was eating the bones if they were not jinns? And the people couldn't see them. Rasulullah Sallam told them, don't when you go to the call of nature, attend the call of nature, after, you know, going, I mean, wash, emptying yourself, when you want to clean yourself with some stone or some piece of earth, do it, but not with bones. The Sahaba must have been wondering why. He said, because the bones are food for jinn and they will hurt you. So this means all over Medina, wherever there were bones, and bones are everywhere, there were jinns. So why these jinns stayed out of Medina? They should have come and started eating bones and also discussing things. So they don't understand. 
what are those things which eat bones? Do you know? Yes. Yes. yes? What are those? Germs. Bacteria. Bacteria, yes. viruses. Viruses, yes. 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 Rasulullah who received the Quran, he was the wisest man on earth. When the concept of germs was not all known to the West or anywhere in the world, about 1200 years before that happened, God had told him that there is something, some invisible creature called jinn. And those who eat bones, they are also jinns. So we believe in every form of jinn which the Holy Quran describes. And we reject every form of jinns in which the mullahs believe. All right. يختتم أمير المؤمنين الموضوع وهو موضوع طويل لا ينتهي في جلسة واحدة بحديث عن أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم نهى عن الاستجمار بالعظام وقال لا تستخدموا هذه العظام فلماذا لا نستخدم هذه العظام للاستجمار فقال لأنها طعام إخوانكم من الجن فأي جن أي جنها العظام موجودة خارج المدينة ولا تفنى من خارج المدينة فكأن الجن موجودون خارج المدينة ولا يدخلون لأكل العظام أو مثل هذه الأمور بالطبع العظام لا تأكلها الجن ولكن الجن الذي يشير إليهم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ينفي كل مفهوم يقول هؤلاء المشايخ هؤلاء الجن أي المخلوقات الخفية التي تتغذى على العظام وهي الميكروبات والبكتيريا ومثل هذه الكائنات الدقيقة التي تتغذى على لو استخدمها الإنسان في الاستجمار فإنها تلوثه وتصيبه بالالتهابات والأمراض هذه نصيحة طيبة من النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم نصيحة صحية وفي نفس الوقت تقضي على هذا المفهوم الباطل لهؤلاء الشيوخ Uh, and here, this is also an ayah in, in, the, in favor of the truth of Muhammad Sallallahu But when no one on earth knew that there was an invisible minute thing which eats the bones and you can't see it, he knew it. That means he was the true prophet of Allah. You know, beloved by the alimul ghayb wa shahada. وهذا الحديث بهذه المناسبة آية عظيمة على صدق النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنه يتلقى الوحي من الله فإنه قبل أن يعرف الناس بوجود هذه الكائنات أخبرنا عنه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وحذرنا من شرها صلى الله عليه وسلم Yes please, next one, next question uh, Or shall we continue on Jin? Shall we... There is actually, uh, on the same terms, we can talk about the magic and the uh, um, hasad, you know. People believe so much in hasad that they in know. The, the effect uh, of, yes. of the art. They go possible. out of their ways to, to... You see, whatever is supported by the Quran, I believe. Whatever is not supported or rejected by the Quran, I reject, I do not believe. About the effect of the power of the eye, the Holy Quran supports this view and gives us an example. What happened when there was a bout between Hazrat Moses and uh, the magicians of Pharaoh? The Holy Quran tells us, Saharu, Ayun, and Nase. They were human beings. Their magic was not working on the ropes. The ropes remained ropes. But they bound the eyes. They cast their spells upon the eyes. But the khayalun nas, the khayalun nas, the or the khayalun nas, anna an anna hunna. Alat mina tasa. So they thought, they imagined these ropes were like snakes, but they were not snakes. So. Power of the eye does not require holiness. It is a human power. And that, what was claimed by the Quran so many years ago, so many centuries ago, is now proved by scientific research. There is a full science, a branch of science, grown on this uh, evidence that man with his mental power can influence others. 
So mesmerism, hypnotism, that is the same thing. So if somebody is evil, he can use his hand, if he's powerful, he can kill. He can you take a pistol in his hand and can fire. So any evil man is a danger for the society. So if somebody has that power and he uses, employs it to injure people, he can do it. No problem. But you should be able to defend yourself by acquiring superior power. If you have a better power of brain, nobody can, can hurt you. Like also it happened at the time of Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he visited Abu Jahl to help a poor person, a weak man, whose money had been embezzled by Abu Jahl and he refused to return. When Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu was approached by the man and the Ahadul Fazul, the Hilful Fuzul, was invoked, he was reminded of Hilful Fuzul. He stood knowing Abu Jahl was the greatest enemy of Muhammad Sallallahu He accompanied the man to Abu Jahl and said, why don't you give money of this poor man? And instead of giving the money, no, I'm refusing. He said, all right, he went inside or sent somebody in, brought the money, said, take it and go away. The people who were sitting by with his side, they were absolutely flabbergasted, astounded. He said, you tell us this is the worst man, you must kill him, you do this and that, and you behave like a lamb in his presence, <laughs> following his orders, you know, like an incomplete person without power. He said, you don't see, you didn't see what I saw. I saw a mad-like camel behind him, ready to pounce upon me if I refused. This is not a vision. Huh? This is not a vision. This is the effect of the Holy Prophet on him. No. This was a VN cast by God on yes. the eyes of Abu Jahl. Yes. What I've been saying yes. is, yes. God can also oh. use the same brain power which human beings do. Now I refer back to Moses. When these people cast their spell on the eyes of, of people, God cast a spell from him side, from himself, on the same eye and the, the magic was broken and the ropes were being, was visible again. This is the meaning of the, the Asa act it up. That's how I understand. When the Asa was so thrown, it was God who was working on the minds of the people and the weak forces of human beings ceased to work. And if, when God decided, all right, the same eyes, now I, the Master, order you to see them as ropes and see this as a greater, more powerful snake. And suddenly, the people saw a completely different thing. There was a very powerful snake and the ropes had disappeared, which meant that more powerful spell of the willpower can vanish the weaker spell cast by a man. So this is how Allah also uses the same mental power. Why I say it was a case of this? Because the companions of Abu Jahl did not see a camel. If there had been a camel created by God, everybody should have seen it. So it means God sometimes casts spells on people's eyes and they begin to see. And this is also a clue to visions. When we see visions, the same mental faculty, the machinery, is completely taken over by God. And then, whatever God wants us to see, we begin to see. And when it is not taken over by God, human psyche sometimes 
activates it. And we begin to see things which are not there. The mad people, the raving people, the, uh, the feverish people under high fever, they say, we see this demon, we see that person, our old fa dead father has come back and this and that. This is not a jinn. It is the same mental power which God has given to every human being, which gets activated by itself sometimes. But when it ex gets activated by itself, then the message is not true. There is no proof that what they see is right or what they think would happen, it happens, it doesn't happen like that. But when it is taken over by God, then the visions come true, when the messages are fulfilled. That is the only difference, the mental powers are the same. But who operates? If God operates them, then their message is always true. If human beings operate by themselves, then this just uh, raving or aghaat or alam, like dreams, dream is also a mental process. As the, the king at the time of Joseph had seen a vision. The courtiers, the great ulema of the period, they said, Abhasa Ahlamin, your mental ravings, human psychic uh, phenomenon, your psyche is showing you things, no more. But it was not the same mind of a sleeper which sees a dream, sometimes sees the dream from his nafs, sometimes from God. The difference is that when it is nafs, it is just meaningless. When it is God operating the same machine, then it becomes a very powerful message. It's like the microphone. I can speak in it, anybody else can. A liar can use the same microphone and a truthful person can use the same microphone. The machinery remains the same. It is the speaker which makes the difference. It's used for all the rubbish of the pop music and this. Also it is used for reciting the Holy Quran. So this is how the mind works. Right? Okay. Can I ask a question on the issue of the sihr and the eye and the eye? فتحدث أمير المؤمنين وقال إن السحر والتأثير في العين هذه حقائق أشار إليها القرآن الكريم ونحن نصدق ما يقوله القرآن الكريم وليس الخرافات التي يقولها الناس وبين أن سيدنا موسى عليه السلام كان في لقائه مع السحرة وأن هؤلاء السحرة ألقوا حبالهم وأنهم استطاعوا أن يؤثروا في أعين الناس بحيث يروا هذه الحبال كأنها ثعابين تتحرك إذا هذا التأثير تأثير في عيون الناس بفعل الساحر نفسه عنده قوة نفسية مسيطرة يستطيع بها أن يؤثر على من هو أضعف منه نفسيا سحروا أعين الناس إذا بس القرآن سحروا أعين الناس أي أنهم استطاعوا أن يؤثروا على أعين الناس ويخدعوها فيروا هذا الذي يرون والله سبحانه وتعالى استخدم نفس هذه القوة النفسية وأثر في أعين السحرة عندما ألقى سيدنا موسى بعصاه فأبطلت كل أو أكلت أو التهمت كل هذه الثعابين فهذا تأثير من عند الله سبحانه وتعالى أما التأثير الآخر فقد كان من القوة النفسية لهؤلاء السحرة وبين أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أيضا في أحد المرات ذهب إليه رجل يستنجد به ويطالبه بأنه مشارك في حلف الفضول فيأتي يأتي تعال معي لأخذ حقي من أبي جهل وأبو جهل كان من أعدى أعداء النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وكان زعيما كبيرا في قريش ومع ذلك ذهب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى لقائه ومعه الرجل وأمره قائلا اعط هذا الرجل حقه فإذا بأبي جهل يبادر ويعطي للرجل حقه فتعجب الناس أنت عدو له فكيف تخضع له بهذه الطريقة فقال لو رأيتم ما رأيتموه 
لقد رأيت كأن هناك جمل كبير مجنون يود أن ينقض علي فلم أتمكن إلا أن أطيع هذا المشهد الذي رآه أبو جهل تأثير من الله في هذا الجهاز النفسي أو العصبي في الإنسان الذي أثر في عينه فرأى هذا المشهد وهذا يعطي فكرة عن الكشوف فالكشوف أيضا تأثير من الله سبحانه وتعالى في عين الإنسان يرى بها أشياء لا يراها الآخرون وفي حادثة أبي جهل هو فقط الذي رأى الجمل ولكن الباقون لم يروا هذا الجمل فالكشف هو أمر صادق وكذلك الحلم الصادق الذي يصبح حقيقة هو تأثير من الله في الذهن البشري أو في النفس البشرية فترى ما ترى نفس هذه الملكة موجودة في كل إنسان إذا تأثر أو هو الذي نشطها بنفسه أو أثر بها بنفسه فإنها تعطي أضغاث الأحلام أما إذا كان المؤثر هو الله سبحانه وتعالى فإنها تعطي الأحلام الصادقة الحقيقية والرؤى الصادقة الحقيقية إذا هذا النوع من السحر أو هذا النوع من تأثير العين هو قوة وملكة نفسية موجودة في بعض الناس يستطيعون بها أن يؤثروا على غيرهم إذا كان غيرهم هذا أقوى منهم من هذه الناحية فإنه لا يتأثر بها هيبنوتيزم وأشار أمير من أن الآن هذه الأمور حقيقية ولها دراسات في الجامعات في مثل التنويم المغناطيسي ومثل هذه التأثيرات النفسية إذا هي ملكة في بعض الأشخاص لا علاقة لها بالجن أو المخلوقات الخفية التي يتحدث عنها هؤلاء الشيوخ حضور what you explain is the effect of the eye or the effect on the eye both yes but uh, uh, Maha is asking about the hasad the hasad that means yes. when I see a good see, child I say, oh he is good see, the in... mental power creates the power not necessarily through the eye when the the, the magician of Pharaoh they concentrated thinking of something. They said, these are ropes, 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 ropes are snakes, snakes, snakes. And the power of the mind created spell over the eyes of the people. And they also started seeing what they were thinking. Mm -hmm. So it is the power of the mind. It's an evil mind thinks bad of others. And when it is a powerful evil mind, then bad things begin to take shape in the mind of the others and they scare them. So this is the when Sharra Hasidin is a Hasad. When he concentrates on that evil thinking, then it may harm other people. Although this is one side of the meaning of Hasidin is a Hasad. One side of the other side. One side of the meaning, of course, only one side. There's so many others, of course. أنا أردت أن أستفسر أردت أن أستفسر من أمين المؤمنين عن الحسد نفسه وهي قدرة بعض الأشخاص في التأثير السيء على أشخاص آخرين فقال حضور نعم هذا يحدث وعندما يكون الإنسان شرير النفس ويركز تفكيره في هذه الأمور ويستطيع بها أن يؤثر في الشخص الآخر وقد يؤدي إلى أن يصاب ببعض الأضرار وهذا من معاني قول الله تعالى ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد Now the Holy Quran gives a proof that sometimes even the Prophet's eyes can be under the spell of powerful magicians but Allah saves him so they are saved in one place it says Saharu Ayun and Nasir, all people begin to say. About more Holy Quran says is Faiza Hebaluhum wa isiyuhum yukhayalu ilehe min serehim annahatasa. Yukhayalu ilehe ila Musa. من سهرهم أنها تصع فأجسى في نفسه خيفة 
even the prophet of God with such powerful mind as Moses. Sometimes the magicians are so powerful that by so Hasad can also do, do some shirk to pious people. Mm -hmm. But Allah said, La takhaf, inna kanta la'ala. Why? Wa alqi ma fi yameene ka talqaf ma sanahu. So, when human power fails against evil power, Allah's power works. So that is why we pray to Allah for help. Min sharrin, min sharri hasidin is asad. That's the only answer. Not a mullah, but a prayer. ويؤكد أمير المؤمنين هذا المعنى بالاستشهاد بهذه الآية القرآنية في مع سيدنا موسى عليه الصلاة والسلام أنه عندما ألقى الصحراء عصيهم وحبالهم خيل إليه من سحرهم أنها تسعى أي من تأثير تأثيرهم هذا النفسي عليه وتركيزهم في هذا المفهوم خيل إليه أن هذه تتحرك كأنها الثعابين ومع كونه نبي عظيم ذو قوة نفسية عظيمة إلا أنه أيضا تأثر بها وهذا يدل على أن الأشرار النفسانيين يستطيعون أن يؤثروا على الصلحاء من الناس ولذلك علمنا القرآن أن نستعيذ بالله ليس بالمشايخ ولا بأقوالهم وإنما بالله سبحانه وتعالى نستعيذ بالله من شر حاسد إذا حسد نعم جزاكم الله السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته We have over five minutes.